Stephen's got business now on the programme. I'm going to start with Google. Uh, maybe going back into business, uh, Google, in China. This is according to reports in US media that say the search giant has engineers working on a new app which will give censored search results, filtering terms that are banned by the Chinese authorities. According to those reports, Google has already shown the app to Chinese officials, but state media in China today denying the company's return was being considered. Google pulled its search engine out of China in 2010. The majority of its services remain blocked there. But in recent years, the internet giant has showed renewed interest in returning, investing in the Chinese retailer JD.com and opening a research centre in the country. Well, those reports had an impact on the markets when they first emerged on Wednesday. Baidu, which is China's main search engine, would be Google's biggest rival if they were operating there. They saw their shares slump by over 7% on Wall Street small gains on Alphabet, which is, of course, the owner of Google. And Dipti will have more on that in the press review in just a moment, in fact, so stay with us for that. Now, the latest move by the White House on the trade dispute with China, they're causing waves on the markets, aren't they? We've seen Chinese shares take a tumble after Donald Trump told his trade representative to look at more than doubling proposed tariffs on $200 billion of Chinese imports. Sharp falls, as you can see there on the markets in Shanghai and Hong Kong, knock-on effects too in Tokyo and on the Kospi in Seoul. Today, European shares also opening in the red, not to the same extent of falls, though. Mining companies, in fact, seeing the biggest falls at the open, and that is connected to the China story. The carmaker BMW, their shares down over 1% after reporting lower profits and sales. Lots of focus in the UK today on the Bank of England, which is expected to raise rates uh, later on. Let's turn to Tesla now, the uh, electric car maker, showing signs of a turnaround. That's right, Tesla's burning through less cash than before, and its mass market Model 3 car is finally starting to make money. But losses at the company doubled in the three months to the end of June. CEO Elon Musk, though, promising investors the company will turn a profit this year. Taxi Myers Belkin reports. Tesla's latest losses are huge, almost $720 million in the past three months but revenues are also rising. The company took in $4 billion in that same period, up more than 40% on 2017 figures. With the company's chief executive now expecting to turn a profit for the first time in just a matter of months, the car manufacturer's shares have soared. It took 15 years to execute our initial goal to produce an affordable, long-range electric vehicle that can also be highly profitable. In the second half of 2018, we expect to become both sustainably profitable and cash flow positive. The reason behind Musk's optimistic prognosis, accelerated production of the company's Model 3. Tesla says it's now regularly producing 5,000 cars a week, over 28,000 in total over the past three months. Musk's aiming to make over 50,000 more of his latest model in the coming quarter. The company that in February sent a car into space has recently struggled with a number of production issues, thwarting delivery targets. In June, the company cut 9% of its staff in an attempt to boost its bottom line. With the electric vehicle innovator now predicting it'll be churning out some 10,000 vehicles per week by next year, investors are hoping the long wait for profit will soon pay off. Now to the uh, magazine group, Condé Nast, it's to sell three of its titles as part of a cost-cutting uh, measure. That's right, it's part of, this is at least according to the New York Times, the magazines affected are Brides, Golf Digest and W. The announcement due to be made next week at a meeting of senior staff members at Condé Nast. The company lost more than $120 million last year. It currently owns 14 titles, including Vogue, The New Yorker and Vanity Fair. And finally, is uh, America's love affair with beer coming to an end, Stephen? This is something the Wall Street Journal has been looking into. According to America's Beer Institute, a trade body apparently for brewers, just under 50% of drinkers in the US last year chose beer, down from 60% in the 1990s. But for young people, the drop has been even more dramatic, just 43% of them compared to 65 10 years previously. Instead, more young people are choosing wine and spirits, the trend started to be borne out in Brewer's financial results. The maker of Coors saw a 3% drop in US sales in the last quarter. It was a similar picture for the world's biggest brewer, AB InBev. Uh, a 32-year-old marketing executive telling The Wall Street Journal of this article that beer felt like empty calories and didn't feel sophisticated. Oh, I'd still love that guy carrying about 12 <laughs> of them. That's so sophisticated. He's, yeah, he still definitely feels like that. <laughs>